Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Pikmin 2. Last time we were in the Awakening Wood, met our poison pals, the White Pikmin, and today we're gonna make some new friends in the Perplexing Pool, but maybe not the ones you would be expecting. You'll probably be able to figure it out really quickly here on this flyby. If you can't figure it out, well, you'll have another chance in a few moments. If you've been enjoying this series, if you could like the video, comment on said video, and subscribe with the bell thing, I would really appreciate it. But first, a message from our sponsors. This is basically just the ship telling you that pink Pikmin and purple Pikmin reside in the hull of the ship, as we've already learned, just to reinforce it for you. That's how you both get them out. And everything the circle touches is our Pikmin. Pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and get all of our white Pikmin today. We're gonna fill up with a few more of the red Pikmin my warning to you when you play in this first part of the perplexing pool because we are going to be making some new friends you don't want to fill up with a full squad if you do that you won't have space for your new buddies specifically the yellow pikmin they are the new pikmin of the day not going to make a ton of fanfare about the yellow pikmin this time around we did meet them in pikmin 3 so we know they exist sorry yellow pikmin very useful pikmin there's nothing bad about them. I'm not trying to shortchange our yellow buddies. However, we have bigger fish to fry. We actually have a lot of work to do in this episode. There's a Wallywog. That's a classic Pikmin 1 enemy. One of my least favorites and usually winds up killing a ton of my Pikmin. Surprise! But yeah, we, uh, we have a ton to do. This is a pressure plate puzzle. Hopefully you can figure this one out, viewers. It's gonna have... To throw all your Pikmin up on the ledge, you're going to want to save one of those Pikmin. In this case, probably a red Pikmin. You're going to want all 15 of your white Pikmin for the upcoming wall that we're going to have to break down. You can leave the red there to hang out. Another super annoying Pikmin enemy is the Swooping Snitch Bug. Probably one of my least favorites. Not a tough enemy to take out. Not super destructive or anything. But... It does have a tendency to waste your time. There's two of them in this area, which is really annoying. They swoop down, they grab your Pikmin, they bury them in the ground, and you have to pluck them again. I don't know if they remove the flowers or not, but in this case, I'm feeling kind of vindictive. How about we get, a, get our murder on? If you have a good, solid crew of Pikmin, in this case, my 54 of them, that's usually enough to be robust. To take it out so that should probably do it for you we're gonna split up the squad here real quick the enemy that we're facing here is a brand new enemy I think it was introduced it might have been introduced in Pikmin 1 but if not this is the fiery bull blacks pretty intense enemy it has a ton of HP I'm gonna use a spicy spray just to speed up this process this guy is really tough to to knock out don't be too uh, afraid to use your spicy sprays I know that, that can be point of contention for some people that you want to hold on to it but it's one of those things that I'd recommend if you need it use it in this case definitely do it you don't want to have that bull black set your Pikmin on fire or to give your Pikmin the chomp so that's a good way to avoid it now we're going to use the remainder of our white Pikmin aka all of them I don't know why I said remainder to knock down that poison wall very good and then with the remaining spicy spray that we have here's another familiar enemy that we encountered in one of the dungeons, the fire blowhog, but instead the game got distracted and wants us to investigate this ball sack instead, we will do that. It is not as exciting as the game wants you to believe. This spore, whatever this is, it is just the, um, the cover for a spicy berry plant area. You can take it out when you do that. It will uh, stop blowing spores in the air and it turns into spicy berry plants. I don't know exactly how that works. Viewers, are there any plants out there that initially shoot spores and then turn into something useful? Like that, I have no idea. No idea. But we're gonna split up the squad here. We're going to alternate between trying to tear this wall down as well as building this bridge. Pretty useful. Our beautiful little Pikmin bonking their sweet heads, trying to build this bridge. This bridge is super useful in this case because it allows you to have quicker access to where the onion is. 
it will probably cause a bit of a problem later on because the Pikmin will kind of get confused about where to go in certain ways, but that's because they are uh, dumb like me. So perfect. It's very good. So we'll flip on over to, uh, to the white Pikmin here in a moment. There's the treasure of the day. That's the only above ground treasure we're going to be gathering and something that we're going to need our new pals to do. Looks like our white Pikmin are just about done. White Pikmin are going to be very pivotal in this episode to help propagate the yellows, but this is one of my favorite animations is whenever they get near the end of a bridge that they are building, they just kind of, the animation just freaks out. So these are the sheer grubs, I think. Um, they might, maybe not, I don't know. But these guys are really annoying. I would recommend taking them out before you bring your yellows or anybody across the bridge. It's really convenient at times just to kind of automate the process and just have your Pikmin do a task and then, you know, stay at the base or whatever. But if you do that, you run the risk of randos like these guys. These almost look like termites. Um, you run the risk of them chomping your Pikmin and if you don't have enough Pikmin to play defense, then you might have an item that you're trying to gather that you can't when they eat the Pikmin that are trying to get together to do it. So here we go. Let's get our Pikmin 2 introduction to Yellow Pikmin. So there you go. Yellow Pikmin are great. They are going to be very useful going forward in the future. They have big ears, bright eyes, and they're immune to electricity. So... They're going to be very useful. You can throw them very high. They're good at digging things. I don't know if that mechanic was implemented as much in this game, but we're going to need as many of them as we can get. Now that we do have white Pikmin with us, what's convenient, as long as you have at least one yellow Pikmin on whatever pellet or enemy that you are trying to carry, you can fill it with the remainder of yellows, white, purple, whatever you have. As long as you at least have one yellow, the remainder of that can be any amount of purple and white. If it's any other color, whichever type of Pikmin is the dominant force there will over overload it and it'll be the one that takes control to take it back to the onion. Which in this case, we want everything to focus on the yellows. That's gonna be the most useful. There's not really a ton left for the reds to do at this point. So they can just kind of hang out. They can smack their heads in this ball sack for a little bit. We'll probably wind up taking the corpses of all the enemies that we battled today and use those as nightmare fuel for the yellows. It's very good. This is a quick and easy way to build up your yellow army, which is nice that they do this for you. And because the yellows were the five remainders on the screen that preventing us from getting out 100 Pikmin, you will be able to get to the full 100 squad once you get all the pellets, once you get all the enemies harvested, which sounds kind of gross and weird. Now I thought that if you would just use white Pikmin by themselves that they would take it to whatever is the closest onion, but apparently not, because those guys try to take it to the red onion, which I wasn't aware of, so there you go. But we're definitely going to want to use the yellows and the whites together to build up as big of an army as possible. Just going to forewarn you. Yellows are going to kind of win you the day on this upcoming dungeon. You definitely will want as many of them as possible. We're going to grab the snitch bug. And I thought that I was going to grab the fire blowhog, but the reds that took the ball sack out decided that they were going to use it for their own determination. So they actually took it back to the, to the ship in the onion. So it is what it is. But we can grab this grub here, which I think is still kind of alive. That's kind of gross. Not gonna be alive for much longer. We don't really need it. We're just gonna focus on kind of the big ticket stuff. Those grubs are the ones that will feast on the spicy berry plants. We're not super worried about that. And so now that we've got a little bit of time, um, we're just gonna kind of head back to the area that we were in. We're gonna kill this snitch bug too, just because I'm feeling a little vindictive. That's one of the things that I that I've realized that gets on my nerves is there's certain enemies here that aren't really like consequential, but you know, if they get help in business when I'm trying to do something big like this, you gotta take them out. You gotta take out your enemies 
not let them get in the way of your your business enterprises. So now, as you can see, we have hit the full 100 roster slots. Having Louie and Olimar here is very beneficial because we've got a lot of plucking to do. What the pluck are we doing? We're gonna get all these yellows. We're gonna finish up the majority of this day above ground and then with a little bit of time left, we're actually gonna do a dungeon today, which is gonna take up the second half of the video and the majority of the video. You're able to do this probably if you hustle enough like I'm doing, like me, because I'm epic and, you know, pro player, of course. So we'll head back to the onion in a minute, but first, let's go ahead and switch to our yellows and have them not get the treasure. Guys, what are we doing here? What's, uh, what's the holdup? I'm just going to try to throw as many of my Pikmin here. Like you can see, if it's not yellows, you're not going to be getting much. And apparently there's nectar patches on this concrete. I don't know. I don't know how that works, but... Flower your Pikmin whenever you get a chance to. Especially your yellows, they're the ones that are gonna want to, uh, they're gonna be of the most use today. So switch to more of the yellows. See if we can get this treasure out of the way. And, okay. Uh, guys, hello? There's a bridge right there. Uh, well, it appears they're going the long way. For whatever reason, we will leave them to their own devices. I don't think there's anything that's really in the way that's gonna cause them any harm. They should be able to bring it around town. We are gonna collect the reds that defied orders and took the fiery blowhog over here. That was so long ago that those Pikmin have since turned into Pikmin buds, which is the second level of growth. Are you my buds viewers? Are you my Pikmin buds? I think you are. So now that we've got that taken care of, let's go ahead and take out this Wally Wall. There's no real reason to kill these overworld Pikmin enemies, but sometimes it's just kind of fun. Clear them out. And this guy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh no. Oh, he is just cr he's crushing us. Oh, we lost the Pikmin there. Oh, it's a yellow. No. That's okay. Taking care of the overworld Pikmin enemies, for the most part, isn't super necessary. Unless you've got your Pikmin that are kind of doing secondary quests without your... You know, without having your eyes on it, you don't want to lose track of that and then, then, then get crushed. I can't talk. But that is the cave of the day. If you are afraid of spiders, maybe sit this one out. It will not be for you. But we have one final Pikmin to grab from the quest. Earlier, the red Pikmin so diligently sitting on that pressure plate, helping us out. What a dude. What a great pal. We appreciate his sacrifice. You can get all the other Pikmin together in preparation. You head back, scoop up the remaining yellows. Now that they're done with this treasure, which as we're about to learn is the Impediment Scourge. That's a great name. I'm gonna try not to ruin these things, but if you aren't aware of what the real life thing of that is, that's a bottle opener used for uh, pulling caps off bottles. If you for some reason didn't know what that was. So we've got 99 Pikmin. I could grab another red or go back and get a yellow, but at this point, it's pretty inconsequential. It doesn't really matter. Scoop up your squad and let's get ready for a pretty decent, dangerous dungeon. We're gonna hop all the way down. In this dungeon, it's gonna be the last time that I include any of these save screens. And in future dungeons, I'm just gonna cut them out. There's just no reason for it, viewers. You just gotta cut it out. You don't want to see that. I don't want to bother you with it. So here we are. Welcome to the Citadel of Spiders. This is a pretty decent intermediate level dungeon. Not super difficult. Has a good amount of treasure. I think we're hitting double di digit treasures at this point. And the enemies are a good variety of old stuff and new stuff. So you're going to see some harmless enemies like these. Leaf bugs here, they're not going to cause any danger to you. You can kill them if you want to. There's the grubs on the ground. You should probably try to kill those ones. I believe this is the kind. This might be the female kind that will kill your Pikmin. So you're going to want to get rid of them. Because when you're going to be trying to carry back big old treasures like this, you don't want your Pikmin to get sidetracked or attacked. Let's see if I give them enough. I did not, of course. There are a few more. And this is where white Pikmin become incredibly useful 
They are super fast at carrying treasure. So if you're trying to move quick, if you gotta go fast, like D-Mike does here at D-Mike Industries, we pride ourselves on expediting every process we possibly can. White Pikmin on your way to go. Use your White Pikmin, use your flowered reds, whatever you got on hand. Should get your treasure as fast as possible to satisfy our corporate overlords. But here you go. Here's our first treasure of the day. Underground, the love nugget. Very horribly textured. That was apparently not meant for HD. So sorry about that, but you're going to see probably plenty more of those. This game when it was made, of course, was made back in 2001 or 2002. Standard definition. When you upscale stuff, it kind of looks a little poopy sometimes, but I thought it'd be fun to show you Pikmin 2 in a new light. So there you go. But one thing that's not new, saving. We're never doing that. No, ma'am, no sir, no anybody in between. We are not going to be doing that. It's a waste of our time. Floor two. On tap. We're going to go ahead and knock down this wall. This is going to be one of your first opportunities to have some underground hidden treasure. So that's why bringing white Pikmin is pretty useful. White Pikmin will be able to detect things that are hidden, which you would think in this area right here that there would be a hidden treasure. There's not. Game is a huge jerk. Super uncool. But yeah. Nothing. Your white Pikmin will be able to do, uncover actual hidden treasure. And once they do, as long as the treasure is actually physically visible on screen, you will be able to have any other other any of your other Pikmin help out. So they just need to dig it out until you can see a little bit of it visibly above the ground, and then your other Pikmin can jump in and they can all dig it out together. I don't know if the digging rates of the different types of Pikmin are the same in this game. I know that a viewer mentioned very kindly when I was doing my Pikmin 3 Let's Play that the different types of Pikmin had different digging rates. I don't know if that's the case here, but your white Pikmin are the ones that get you the hidden stuff. So just keep that in mind. We've got some more Wally Wogs to deal with. We have these weird spiders that um, will try to take the treasure away in the corpses of the other, of the other, um, the baddies. After we lose six more Pikmin to the Wally Wog, that's going to be a theme. I've got a feeling. These Wally Wogs are pretty nasty, and uh, I don't have a really good way of fighting them because I'm kind of stupid and impatient. So, yeah, you know, I'm just throwing them underneath it just to get crushed under its fat belly, which is great. There's another six Pikmin. You know, who needs them? Yeah, that was not... That was not best. Not very efficient. We'll have to work on that in the future, develop a bit of a strategy. But there you go. The lip service. I love that. That's one of the best things about this game is... In the same way, I think I said this last time, in the same way that Pikmin 3 had fruit, this one has the treasures that are all really cute, fun names. And out of the sky, as our resolution shifts, we have a free spicy spray. So all you gotta do is walk right into it. Olimar somehow, it like makes like a kissing, sucking sound, like And then he, um, he scoops it up somehow. I don't know, like where's he putting it? Does he have like a spicy spray flask or something that he's, I don't know, viewers, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, but it's weird and I don't know how I feel about it. But there you go. The duck had the paradoxical enigma. I don't know if that's supposed to be a reference to something or like part of the toy, like a classic Nintendo toy, but I don't know. And there you go. There's the creepy spider like trying to harvest the... The Wally Wog. Super, super gross. Yuck. That is just horrific. I'm not afraid of spiders in any way. Like, I'm not gonna pretend like I am, but that's still, you know, still creepy. But there you go. The final treasure of the floor. The RC Cola cap. I don't know if I've ever had an RC Cola. I don't know if I know anybody who has ever had an RC Cola. Viewers, have you had one? Is it good? It seems like the the black sheep of sodas. You know, if it's not a Pepsi or a Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, I cannot talk. Don't worry, viewers, I'm fine. Clean bill of health. The, uh, what do you got left? Like, I guess there's like, 
Dr. Pepper, but that does that count? Like, I feel like that's a different kind. Like, that's almost like a cherry soda. And out of nowhere, from the top rope, the candy pop, bud. If you didn't bring any yellows with you for some reason, which you should have, because I told you to, there's a candy pop, bud, for you. That just shifts reds and yellows, so that's all you get coming out of that. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to run into more purple and uh, white candy pop buds. And get our special Pikmin up to speed. Oh yeah, and a surprise snitch bug. Why not? Why not, viewers? But because of our squad being as robust as it is, stood no chance. And you know what? Just for good old times, we'll let these guys carry the corpse. We want them to be winners. Take the harvest back. The radar's right there anyway, so why not? There you go. Okay, and it gets us a uh, very worthwhile four coins. All right, so here's the gimmick of this floor. As you can see, these enemies are completing a circuit when they touch their butts. So these electro beetles, whatever they are, when they have a buddy, they like to sync up, form a circuit, and they will shoot waves of electricity. When they do that, they will shock any Pikmin that's not yellow. So this is why you need a ton of yellow Pikmin. If you don't have them, use the Candy Pop Bud to get a few, but you'll wish you had a lot. So that's why I brought 20 or 30 with me. I don't remember how many exactly. Just trust me on that one. You're definitely gonna wanna have a good amount. So using your yellow Pikmin, they're gonna be your champions of the day. The Citadel of Spiders is definitely a yellow favored dungeon with all of these electro beetles and what you're going to see on the final floor which you'll definitely want yellows for trust me on that one i wouldn't lead you astray here at dmike industries we look out for everybody that follows this channel and is a part of this unique environment so there you go we're going to take out the snitch bug trying to get in our way i just it's so annoying to me how the developers, when they made this, they had to know that like 20 years later, some guy is gonna be playing this game and it's gonna be his favorite of the Pikmin series. And we're just gonna find a way to slowly ruin his nostalgia by putting emphasis on the worst on the So there you go. Pluck out your yellow Pikmin that got stuck. Wipe out the remainder of the beetles. There's only two left, so there you go. Okay. Yeah, they're not they're not a difficult enemy. They are, they don't do any damage to you as long as you have yellow Pikmin. They're just another one of those kind of time wasters, I would say. It's just a little frustrating to have to deal with, but you know, it's NBD. That stands for no big deal or no banana donuts. For those of you uh, who are in the club, there you go. It's good to just take out as much stuff as you can because when you're trying to move through and collect your treasures, it's really frustrating to think that you've got the floor under control and managed. And then all of a sudden you've got a swooping snitch bug that is plucking your Pikmin away from carrying stuff that is being really hard for me to tackle for some reason. Maybe I'm just really bad at throwing my Pikmin, I don't know. It's probably a combination of both viewers to be completely honest. But it is just so satisfying when you can pin it to the ground and just swarm it. This is coming from a place of pure Pikmin aggression. Nothing beyond that, I promise. Don't worry, we're okay. I know some people play games like, I gotta get up my pent up rage for my life. I'm gonna take it out of my games and I just, I don't feel that way. Although I do get a little bit of mild irritation when I play this game because of those moments, but you know, it's okay. Life goes on. We probably all have swooping snitch bugs in our lives, but it's not the end of the world. I think this is the final or second to last above ground. No, this is not above ground visible below ground treasure there might be one behind this gate i don't remember but now that it's safe we can bring in the rest of the squad this is why having two captains is super nice you can subdivide clear out all the enemy corpses if you want to split up the tasks get stuff going i mean in pikmin 3 you can do that three ways i wonder what they're going to do with pikmin 4 are there going to be four captains that'd be crazy i don't know if that's really necessary 
And it makes me wonder, you know, there isn't really much of a story left for Olimar and for Louie in, in that game. I mean, I guess they were kind of like sort of a part of it in Pikmin 3, but not really. So here is the patience test. This is a can of water chestnuts. For those of you who haven't had water chestnuts, uh, they're circles of little deliciousness. They have a nice crunch to them. They're not really flavorful. They have a little bit of flavor to them, but I'm not really sure what to qualify them as. I don't think they're a vegetable, but I'm also not entirely sure, to be completely honest, so whatever. I know that some people, because of how minimal flavor that they have, they have a tendency to wrap them in bacon. I heard that's a thing, water chestnuts and bacon. What I like to do, not that I do it very often, but whenever I make a nice stir fry, throw them in the chestnuts for some good texture. Always, uh, always a good thing. Now, I do believe there is a hidden treasure here. This is when your white Pikmin are gonna be your champs. And once they start to dig it up a little bit, everybody on the rest of your squad can jump in and help uncover it and then carry it back to the radar. Super useful, makes it a lot quicker. I mean, if you have a ton of white Pikmin, I guess you don't really have a lot to worry about. They can all just kind of do it. You wanna want to use your white Pikmin definitely to carry it because of how much they can expedite the process. But beyond that, yeah, once it's uh, visible at all at any point, any Pikmin can dig it up and get it going. So that's pretty useful. So this is the final treasure of the sub-level three. We've got two more floors to do. Don't be surprised why I know that. This is not my first recording of this, uh, <laughs> of this day, unfortunately. I've had a lot of trouble with my recording setup. Had a, have um, the software is just not playing nice. The audio cuts out sometimes. I'll get most of the way through a recording. I'm talking 25, 30 minutes. And for some reason, the audio recorder and the screen capture software, they're just not buds. And they will sometimes cease to function one way or the other, which is really frustrating because if I lose my video, that defeats the purpose. If I lose my audio, I can go back and record it, which is what I'm actually doing now. This is all post-sync audio, which is really annoying. I had to, I did an entire episode, as you can see here. And uh, you know, it's in like the mid to late 30 minute range and my audio didn't save. So this is me redoing it. Super, super cool. I love that. I'm gonna have to try to figure out an alternative method. And then I was using a, um, I was using a wave bird to play this game. And for whatever reason, when I came back to do my recording at the time that I did this initially, the uh, the dongle, the connector that fits into the GameCube or the Wii or whatever you have, it had shattered. And I don't know how that's possible because, oh no, I forgot that I sent those Pikmin out to, uh, at the suicide mission. Oh, well, would you look at that? It's a white candy pop light. I'm trying to sound surprised. But, you know, this is post sync anyway. No worries, but we're gonna get some more white Pikmin. It's a good chance to do it. And they're gonna be really helpful for you in the future. Anytime that you have a purple or a white candy pop bud, always take advantage of it. They're only typically in dungeons. I don't think there are any in the overworlds. It's the only way that you can get them. Those are our subterranean buddies. But yeah, my, uh, my dongle exploded. Not in a good way. So that was obviously really frustrating. And, uh, yeah, I went and I was able to find the original GameCube controller that did come with my GameCube. I bought one of the platinum GameCubes, the shiny silver one when I was a kid. I mean, I didn't buy it. My family probably did. I didn't have money, but I found it still works. Actually, probably has better response time than using the wave bird. The wave bird is good, but technology is a little outdated. And, you know, there's a little bit of latency, a little bit of uh, a little lag. Can't have lag when you're playing using something like that. So, you know, it is what it is. I'll be using the wired controller for a little while. It's pretty useful, it's good. It still responds the same way. Can't be upset about it. It's like the good old days. All right, so we've got a treasure here behind this wall, but we got a bit of a crabby situation here that we need to assess first. So we're gonna go ahead and take care of that. We're gonna split the squad up, squad goals. And we'll use our reds, who are really desperate into carrying this locket back. I think not, so instead, 
You gotta come over here, draw him out. Surprise! We're gonna attack your buns! Done. There's another treasure underneath. Very good. And they can take the corpse back a little bit if they want to. I don't really care if that makes it back to the radar or not. I don't know if it does. As I try to murder a white Pikmin. Setting on fire. Not intentional. But now you can go back to carrying your prize. I spoiled what the real thing was, but you can find out what the game is going to call it here in a moment. And conveniently, we have no reds to take care of that fire spout. I don't think you can get that treasure off that ledge without taking it down. I think your Pikmin will walk right into it, which is annoying. There's a little piece of Chopala, the king of sweets. Makes me think back to when I was a kid. Life is like a box of chocolates. Please don't see me, whoever uh, made first one. But anyway, when I was a kid, sometimes my family would bring back those big chocolate assortment boxes and they have like the names on the lid about what kind it was, but I was stupid and wouldn't read that stuff. So instead I would just like take a little bite out of everything until I found one that I liked. There's the ones that have like the cream centers, the the fruit filled centers, the caramel, the peanut butter, whatever. I was a big fan of the peanut butter and the caramel ones. How do you say that word viewers? Is it caramel? Is it caramel? How do you like to say it? As we look in that cute little locket with that puppy, which this game is about 20 years old, so you can put the pieces together about the li livelihood of that dog. Um, kind of sad. But the, uh, yeah, I used to just take a little bite out of it and then put it back until I found one that I wanted, which obviously made my parents really happy because they buy a nice box of chocolate to potentially have together or share with other people. And then they have little child nibbles out of it, which is not ideal for alternative consumption. Very, very strange. But yeah, so uh, we're gonna keep going on. We are gonna make sure that our guys take everything back to the radar. You don't need to do any more enemy fighting in this area. It's not required, not really necessary to be honest either. Don't really need to do it. So wait for them to get it back to the radar. Then we can skidoo. We will have one floor left after we check out this treasure. I love how excited they are when they bring it back. I'm not entirely sure what this is. The Flame of Tomorrow. It, uh, is it, it looks like a container of cigarettes, but I don't, I honestly don't know what that is. If you know what that is, viewers, if you've ever seen that, or if you have something that looks like that, uh, share it, because I have no clue what that is. Very strange. It looks like a box of, a box of cigarettes or like a lighter or matches or something. Probably matches. I don't think they would put a box of cigarettes in a kid's game, but I don't know. Nintendo in Japan, they have different standards than for Nintendo in America, but they probably would have censored that. If it was cigarettes in Japan, it would probably be like a box of lollipops in the United States. Peach forbid that we have some reality here in the US and A. But here we go, the final floor. There's only one hidden treasure and one lost battle treasure to acquire here. So throw your white pigment up on the ledge. They're gonna dig out this special prize. I'm sure all of you will know right away what this is. In the game, when it lists what this is, it gives it the actual name of the item, which I thought was very strange. I don't know how it knows what it is. Unless there's like precious gemstones on Hokotate or something. I have no idea. I could not tell you that. But there you go. I remember reading about how back in the day there was some company that made a marketing campaign that basically tried to convince men that in order to make your women happy, you gotta buy them a fancy gemstone, like a, an engagement or a wedding ring. And you need to spend three months salary, which is insane. That is a lot of money. I don't know how much it was back then, but you know, they essentially created this dynamic that people ran with for a long time. Like that was thought to be just kind of common knowledge. Like people didn't know where it came from. Like, oh yeah, this is just what you do, which is kind of stupid in my opinion. Um, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with buying your special one something nice. Of course, if they're into that, yeah, do it. 
You should always treat the people you're with and treat yourself too, viewers. Don't forget to do that. Here at DMIC Industries, we heavily encourage taking care of yourself. But yeah, I don't know. This seems a little fishy to me. So let's go ahead and gather up all of our yellows and we're gonna walk out into the middle of this very obvious battle zone, as you can tell. It's got a nice spider web shadow up above. This is the beady long legs. We fought a couple of these in Pikmin 3, the shaggy long legs. And then the two final boss ones in the uh, final episode, those were a doozy. But yeah, go ahead and spray your yellows with spicy spray. When it lowers its ball sack to you, you can have them slap the bag and you can take it out in one cycle. Doing so will net you the key. Looks like one of the keys from uh, Super Mario 2. Super Mario USA for those of you from Japan. Doki Doki Panic, etc. Everybody knows that. So there you go. When you take out the beady long legs, it explodes into dust, which is really disgusting. And here you go. You get the key. Unfortunately, this item isn't really anything special for influencing the game. It doesn't really create a gimmick in the regular playthrough of the game. However, what you're gonna learn that it does, if you're into that, you can do that too, but it doesn't impact the game itself while we play here. So it is what it is. Go ahead and suck up the key. It's a good amount of Pocos though, one hundo. The key, there you go. Very well textured. So you can, it says it's causing a dimensional shift. I don't know if that's their way of like, I don't know, explaining away challenge mode, but I love that he calls it gibberish. Yeah, so there you go. This worthless device. Doesn't do anything for you. All it does is unlock challenge mode if you wanna do that. I will not be doing that. Probably not even gonna show it off because I really don't care. I spent a lot of time trying to do like the side mission stuff at the end of Pikmin 3 and I didn't really enjoy that as much as I thought that I was gonna do it, but it also explained the story in between Pikmin 2 and Pikmin 3 with what happens to the two captains here. So I made it happen for you guys. There you go. So there's all the treasures, 11 in total. The most so far, and that's a cave complete. We almost have 4,000 Pocos, 40% of the deck collected, and we did lose 14 Pikmin down there, sad. But we're not gonna save to celebrate, of course. And conveniently, the game will dump us right back at the front of the perplexing pool. So now, because we don't have anything left to do, it's advantageous now just to go to sunset. End the day and celebrate, move on with our lives. We'll blast off into the sunset as a handful of Wallywogs very aggressively try to jump at the ship. You'd think that maybe like the exhaust or something would burn, burn them up or something, but I don't know. And there's a texture that was not meant for widescreen. Very nice, very good. Of course, today's report again, is just gonna show you what you did, the funds that you earned, the overworld stuff. In this case, we just had the, uh, the bottle opener. And we did lose some Pikmin. We gained 43 yellows, which is good. Five more of the whites. So we're doing pretty well. We're propagating Pikmin at a good rate. We will make more, of course. And now, one final message from the president. All of our terrible news. I thought I went to Happy Hokotate Savings alone, but it seems my loan came from the shop next door, all devouring black hole loan sharks. Oops. Leave it to a corporate leader to run a company into the ground and then take uh, no accountability. But surprisingly, there's some transparency here of them wanting to tell us that. So there you go. That's all I've got for today, everybody. I've been D-Mike. If you enjoyed this, like the video, comment and subscribe, and hitting the bell will definitely help this channel. This has been Pikmin 2, I've been D-Mike, and I'll see you next time. Bye.